Sometimes I feel like I talk too much about abortion in, on this segment, but I do it for a couple of reasons. The first is that reproductive freedom is a cornerstone of women's rights, obviously. The second is that it's under more threat than pretty much any other right in the country. But the third is that it's their gateway drug. It's the free sample they offer out to curious passerby because it's the argument they sound the least unreasonable about. But as we learn time and time again, abortion isn't just a uniquely egregious sin that they're breaking a general rule for or anything. The second it has a chance to, opposition to abortion morphs into opposition to the whole suite of women's rights. All of a sudden, contraception is also evil, and so is in vitro fertilization, and so is suffrage, and now that you mention it, so are ladies wearing trouser pants. Anyway, we got another story to help demonstrate that this week out of Florida when a church refused to rent space to a mother because her child was conceived through IVF. She was hoping to rent their gymnasium for an event, which she had apparently done the year before. But in their intervening time, the leaders at the Our Lady of Lords Catholic Church in Dunedin, Florida, looked her up on the Googles and learned that she conceived a child through in vitro fertilization. And as we all know, IVF causes embryos to be destroyed and gives women more control over reproduction. So they refused to take her money. And to be clear, that's perfectly legal because discrimination and religious freedom mean the same damn thing in this country. But religions don't have to be Abrahamic to be problematic for women. And we were reminded of that this week from a story out of France. Special thanks to astute listener, Haiki. Not sure about the pronunciation, but thanks, and I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. Anyway, Haiki sent us a story about Gregorian Bevaluru, and I don't care if I got his name right because he's a sex pest. Or at least that's the position of the French authorities who arrested him on suspicion of using his position as a tantric guru to indoctrinate female followers for sexual exploitation. So yeah, this story is crazy fucked up for its scope, if nothing else. Bivalaru is a 71-year-old leader of an international tantric yoga organization, despite the fact that he was convicted of child rape in his native Romania back in the 90s. His group is based in England, but he was arrested in Paris along with 40 or so other high-ranking members of his organization. And he's been charged with human trafficking, organized kidnapping, rape, and organized abuse of a weakness by members of a sect which seems like an awesome crime to have a law against. He's also apparently wanted for human trafficking in Finland as well. So this guy should have a lovely tour of European prisons between now and his death. And lastly, before I sign off of here, I wanted to comment on an absolutely disgusting piece from the Gospel Coalition that went kind of viral last week. It was from an anonymous father who warned people that allowing their kids to befriend LGBTQ people might just turn them trans. The title of his bigot screed was, I love my transgender child, I love Jesus more. And in it, he basically disowns his trans daughter from behind a mask. He says she was hanging out with an old friend who was, quote, moving through the spectrum of the LGBT plus community, end quote. As though it was an evolution where you start lesbian and then slowly move toward trans. And if that wasn't bad enough, some other friends, and I'm not going to misgender his daughter like he does throughout the this piece here, quote, expressed to her that their belief that LGBT plus lifestyles can align with Christianity, end quote. So there you have it, the dangers of being kind and loving like you pretend your book tells you to. And look, not to appropriate another group suffering here or anything, but it's important that we recognize the degree to which anti-trans bigotry is just an extension of misogyny. I mean, that's not universally true, not, but you know, 99 times out of 100, when transphobes are freaking out about a trans thing, it's trans women they're freaking out about. It's the idea that someone would pass up on the opportunity to be masculine in an effort to literally be anything else. Anyway, on that note, and with the hope that that asshole dad goes to bed every night terrified of what's going to happen when his daughter becomes a plus, I'll wrap things up and hand you back over to Noah, Heath, and Eli. <laughs> 